Hello and welcome back to the Gem Hawks YouTube channel. I hope you're having a beautiful day no matter what it is that you're doing. For today's free wire tutorial, I want to share with you a way in which you can take a standard pinch bail pendant. So I have here a lapis lazuli wing, really pretty carving, but it's come with really quite a basic and frankly unsafe pinch bail. So I want to show you a way that you can turn that into this with just a couple of lengths of wire and not too much of your time. If you'd like to pop down to the board, I can show you those pieces a little bit more closely. So sometimes when we receive gemstone pendants that are drilled from front to back, they come with a pinch bail. I am not a fan of pinch bales at all, I'm afraid, because they have a habit of losing the beautiful thing that you're trying to keep hold of. This is what we are going to learn how to do today, which is to make a slightly more attractive and definitely, definitely safer bale of any size that you like. So you can size this up to be really quite large and you can wear that on ribbon or thonging or whatever you fancy. Let me show you why I don't like pinch bales. So this is just a bit of what's sometimes lovingly referred to as German silver or Tibetan silver, which is just a silver coloured alloy metal. So pinch bales are basically a horseshoe shape, like so, with a loop on the top, which sometimes comes with either a soldered or unsoldered bale up at the top. To open the pinch bale up, I'm going to use my bent chain nose pliers to just draw that apart. One would need to be cautious not to scar a gemstone that is soft. So you can see there's the horseshoe shape. I've mangled that slightly now, but there are two pins that head towards each other in the center of any gemstone that they are set to hold. They would go in through the hole on either side and then you would literally pinch them close together. So this is quite a strong one, which is good. But when you do use these, what can happen is that the pins can become loose or something will catch and the uh, pinch bell will in fact open up. If you use them more than once or twice to kind of open up, one thing that does happen is that the pins will come away. They're soldered onto the tips of the wire and sometimes uh, not enormously well. This is actually much better made than I had anticipated, but you can definitely lose those pins quite easily and then you lose your lovely little angel wing. So I'm going to show you how to make a standard simplified bale, definitely stronger than a pinch bale, and in my mind, just a little bit more attractive. And if we're working with something as pretty as this, I definitely want to see something worthwhile having. So I'm going to pop this one out of the way now, and I will bring that back in later for comparison's sake. So if I just pop my angel wing up to the top for now, what I'm going to do is take approximately seven or eight inches of one millimeter or 18 gauge wire. This is round raw copper I'm working with today. And I want to make sure that that is lovely and smooth. I'm working with one millimeter because I know that it will fit through the hole in my pendant. It's probably the largest gauge wire that I would use in this pendant because there's not much room left. So you'll just need to check that the wire in question does in fact fit through the drill hole in your pendant piece. So I'm just going to smooth this to make it nice and warm and ensure that there are no kinks that I will struggle with later. I'm going to find the approximate center point and put a really nice right angle bend in there. Now, as per usual, one side is slightly longer than the other. It's not really a massive problem. We don't need to use a huge amount of wire. I am just going to make sure that that is a good 90 degrees before I thread my pendant on. Now I'm going to work with the assumption that this is the front. The pendant is actually quite pretty from both directions, so I'm not really overly fussed in which way this is going to go through. If you do have a face, then you will need to decide which way you want to work that piece. This is double face, so it doesn't really matter. So I'm just going to allow that to sit really neatly onto the wire. Just flip that around and then I'm working with lapis lazuli, which is a kind of mid-range strength gemstone to work with. If you're working with something soft, for instance, fluorite, you'll need to be incredibly careful at this point. So what I'm going to do is pop my bent chain nose pliers very, very close to that piece. And I'm going to start to build about a 45 degree angle. I'm going to complete the pinch section by hand. What I don't want to do is to put too much stress or pressure 
on the gemstone. Like I said, lapis is pretty good, so it's unlikely to shed too many layers, but something softer and you may end up with pieces coming away in your hand, and we don't want that. So what we want to do to begin with, and dependent on the strength of your uh, gemstone in question, sometimes you can just warm the wire and pull that over so that the two sections cross. But I'm going to show you how to do this with pliers in case you do have to work with a much softer gemstone. So I'm going to pinch the wire at the front of the design between my bent chain nose pliers like so. And I'm going to push that back at an angle so that it goes across the top of the pendant and sits like so at around about a 90 degree. It's nice and soft, the angle there. I'm going to do the exact same on the back. In fact, what I might do on the back side of this particular piece is show you how you can do this with a nice solid gemstone, and that's just to draw it over. If you are working with a softer gemstone, you may put too much stress at the top and shatter it at its weakest point. So you've got the two wires crossing over now and we're going to dedicate one of those to become an upright. Now this is a relatively slim piece so we don't need to go too far behind that initial 90 degree angle we made before we turn that into an upright like so. And I'm just going to make sure I'm happy with how that's sitting. It's a little bit further back than I'd anticipated, but I'm not going to worry myself about it. If I turn the piece upside down now, I'm just going to straighten that out so that it sits upright to the wing in question. What I'm going to do now is to support the wire that's still coming forwards from the gemstone. You may need to open those out slightly. I'm going to support that gently with my bent chain nose pliers and turn it around our central core wire. What I'm looking to achieve at this juncture is to wrap these two pieces together to ensure that we have a nice strong section to hold our pendant piece in position. So I'm going to do this by hand. You may wish to use pliers, but again, do proceed with caution if you're working with a softer gemstone. So I'm just going to tidy that first little coil up like so before I draw a second loop around that central core. You only really need to just to tie everything together. So I'm happy with how this is progressing so far. So we've drawn our two sections of wire back together, which means we've safely encased the gemstone in question using that through drill, that front to back drill hole in the wing. The next thing that we're going to do is to create a very, very simple bale. But when you look at the difference that we can make between the original piece and our modified piece, it really does add value. Doesn't take a huge amount of wire, doesn't take a huge amount of time. So the next thing that we're going to do is just mess with these wires until we get them sitting in a symmetrical fashion. So I'm going to allow one to sit out slightly to the left at the top. Now because this has been coiling around that central wire, what happens is work hardening travels a little way along. So we need to just rewarm our wire for a moment to get some fluidity back, to get some heat back into the wire just so that we can do what we want with it. And I want to create a nice symmetrical V shape coming away from that little coil we've made at the center. So I'm just going to check that I'm happy with how that's sitting. Before I turn these two slight outward angles into a pair of matching uprights. If I push in this direction, bring those bent chain nose pliers underneath and push from the other side, what we're looking to have is a pair of tram lines and you can have them quite close you can have them further apart you can have them really very very close side by side if you wish to you just need to make them sit where you're happy and all we're going to do next is apply a figure of eight weave to create our bale now a figure of eight weave is so called because if you were to look at the two ends of the wires we're going to go around in a figure of eight so under one side over the other like so what you can do is alter the number of wraps that you have on either side. So I'm going to just grab hold of my wire, which is on the reel. Now for this piece, I'm going to be using 0.4 millimeter. There's a little bit of rough on the end there. So I'm going to put that in the scrap pot for later. 
This is 0.4 millimeter raw copper round wire. That's equivalent to 26 gauge. And what I'm going to do is start by weaving that on to one side of the design. I'm just going to lay a little bit over the end because I need the end to be going down towards the pendant. So if I take that tail up and around, I'm going to start on this side. I'm going to use my pliers to help me and I think we're going to go for a four on either side figure of eight weave. It's sometimes referred to as a basket weave. It's one of the most basic weaves that you can use in wire weaving but it is one that I have used more than anything over the last seven years since I started wire weaving. So if I just trim that little excess away and get that popped in the scrap pot so that I don't later stand on it when I am barefoot wandering around the studio. So there's a little tail on the end there that's sticking up and I just want to tidy that away, scooch those little coils so that they're nice and neat and tidy. Once I'm happy with how that's looking, I'm just going to draw the wire onto the other side, get my pliers out of the way and we can start weaving. So the finer gauge wire is hooked on onto the left side of the bale and it's coming over the top so I then want the tail of wire to come down so it's over the top on one side and then underneath the other side so to begin with to make my life easier I'm just going to hover this little bit of wire a little way up from the nexus point where we drew those two wires together so I'm going to pinch very very firmly and I'm going to wrap four times around this section of wire so that's once and twice three times and four times. Once I've done those four wraps, because I've designated this to be a four and four wrap, I'm just going to make sure that that's neat and tidy. The finer gauge wire has come down between those two, so it's going to now encircle up and around. So we're going to go one and two and three and four. Down the center, tidy the coils, like so and for this what I'm doing is I'm putting one side of my pliers above one side of my pliers below like this and I'm very gently drawing that little coil section all the way together and you can use that very very gently just to tidy things up I'm going to then come down the center and wrap four times on this side so that's one and two and three and four down the center and pull that out of the way tidy up my little coil now with your basket weave it's really quite attractive to have that open like so but you can also use it very very closed up so I'm going to pop this one back out of the way and what I'll do just while you're chatting amongst yourselves is I'll speed through and I'll get a good couple of inches all woven up together and we'll meet on the other side so it's taken me a couple, about five minutes, I suppose, to just weave up a couple of inches worth using that basket weave of bale, which I will now show you how to finish off just so that we can change up the pinch bale on your drilled pendant pieces. So I've continued in a 4-4 basket weave all the way along like so. This is the front orientation that we decided on earlier and what I want to do now is just push these two tails of the heavier wire out to the sides. So we'll just bring that over to one side out at an angle and the, exactly the same on the left hand side. It doesn't need to be too tight to be fair, just a reasonable amount. There has been some work hardening just through pushing and pulling when doing the weaving. Now the next thing that I want to do if you have some straight faced pliers is lay those just above that nexus point. Now I'm not pressing very very hard at all, I'm merely supporting the design at this stage and I'm going to push that woven section forwards and away at about 90 degrees from that pendant piece. So I will now use a round form, you could use a pencil or something a little bit narrower, any round form that you want to set the size of your bale. I've grabbed my bale making pliers and I think I'm going to go for size number five. We'll just see how good that fit is and I'm just going to create a nice smooth circular form up at the top. So you can see here that we've got a nice circular form coming forwards, which is what will be visible, and a slightly flatter section at the back so that it sits neatly against the body. I'm just going to centralise that piece. 
and I'm going to decide that I'm going to use the shorter of my two segments of available wire and I'm going to draw that around that nexus point that we created earlier so I just need to straighten that up ever so slightly I'm going to grab hold of my trusty bent chain nose pliers and draw that over the surface of that nexus point and all the way around the neck of the bale. You may need to pull the other side out of the way just for a moment. And I'm going to draw that all the way around as much as I can to create a nice secure bale section. Hopefully you'll have enough to go around at least once. We've got managed to go around twice finish off at the back and I'm just going to push that down inside the design. We've then got a slightly longer tail available on this side. I'm just going to squeeze that into position. You may need to straighten that up if it's come out of true. Just sit your bale down into position like so and then you can bring the other tail around just one time got slightly more on this side to work with across for a second time perhaps and then I'm going to add a small coil on the surface just to hide any messiness that has occurred so I'm just going to take the tip of those pliers and create a small coil or a small loop and just turn that so that it sits over the face of the design so let me just pull that into position and I can finish that off like so and just push that over the surface so you can play around with a little bit more time than I have given it today just to get that straight and true and again I'm just going to push that into position so that it sits neatly so there's a flat section against the body and an elevated section on the front now I did just have the two sections to show you this piece is made with one millimeter 18 gauge wire as the main section, but was woven up with the 24 gauge, which is 0.5 millimeter in the basket weave. So you can see it gives a much heavier look to the design. As I say, you will just want to play around with that, get it slightly neater than I've allowed it to sit. Centralize that all up. It looks slightly finer when you use that 0.4 or 26 gauge wire to infill. So I hope that you've enjoyed today's tutorial. Just a simple way that you can take something that perhaps didn't cost a huge amount of money and you can make it look much more personalised. You can genuinely say it's wire wrapped jewellery at this stage, but you haven't had to learn a whole brand new thing. It's a relatively simple technique and that bale is used time and time again. So if you get nothing from this, just the bale, then I'm really pleased to have been able to bring you something to help. I hope you have the most beautiful day and I look forward to seeing you again very soon here on the Gemhawks YouTube channel. Bye for now.